opportunity. Um, there is some controversy about what the Chinese are thinking, what the Pakistani are thinking. It's not a Pakistani development plan, etc., etc. But I've been in China a number of times of late, and I can say this to you unabashedly that uh, it's not just the 46 billion dollars. The Chinese are looking at Pakistan as a partner. And it's not just about injecting this money, this FDI coming at concession rates. They are going to support the development if we can partner with them. What they fear is our institutional capacity. And I know of, through my own personal interactions and at, at the government level that they fear that we may not be able to hold hands with them. Of course, this is commercial activity for them, but they also view us as a strategic and global partner for them going forward. So our security and our development is important in the global story. It's not something that they are taking lightly at all. So it's not just about 36 to 38 billion dollars in energy and then another 12 in infrastructure, road networks, etc. It is much more than that. Talking about the SMEs, there are countless ancillary businesses, countless, which will crop up, which will develop, and those are the opportunities that we need to keep our eyes on. And they're not necessarily just about uh, spare part manufacturing, whereby tax reliefs that are given to Chinese for example, may hold us back. No, it's about other things like logistics, like ports, like trades, like uh, uh, you know, uh, service sector. For example, I mean, I meet Chinese every day. I think I, I mean, I have a map of China in my office now because they they all over. And uh, what do they need? Some of them come and talk to me about better hotels, better clubs, better facilities, better food, etc. I mean, the number of businesses that one can actually develop to tie up with them are countless. It is just a case of actually uh, opening up to this idea and dispelling this, this obsession that we as a nation have with conspiracies. I mean, we are just focused on that. Everything there is a conspiracy about it. I mean, you know, I know people who believe the Twin Towers didn't happen. So, how, how does that work? You need to just be positive and there are many business opportunities even in that CPEG um, sort of domain. Uh, industrial zones, that's another big uh, part of the development plan with Pakistan and there there are lots of things that uh, <coughs> Barsa pointed out about the planning commission not being very uh, sort of uh, forthcoming about uh, their plans etc and what they're really doing but the truth is that even they don't know this entire story about what industrial zones are going to be developed they keep asking us what are our priorities in SIM, what should we be doing, etc. This is work in progress. This is not just $46 billion from A to B. This is much more. This is a partnership that has just begun. So for all of us and all of you who haven't really latched on to this idea, please do so because this is going to, this is here to stay and it can benefit you as much as you really want it to benefit you. Um, Finally, I mean, we spoke about uh, one of the constraints was vocational training and technical and human resource, etc. And I mentioned that uh, there is a constant mention about what holds us back and why don't we grow and investment to GDP ratio and savings to GDP, which is which is very low regionally. I mean, a 10 to 11 percent, 18 percent to investment to GDP is regionally also very low. We have grown much lower than our neighbors. We clearly have. Um, one of the things that has really held us back is our financial sector and you know I have a colleague here from the State Bank of Pakistan. I personally think that the commercial banks in this country have done nothing for progress and nothing for development at all. They have had absolutely no inclusive strategy at all and uh, engineer subs mentioned that um, the State Bank of Pakistan, uh, their monetary policy is not in tandem with the fiscal policy. In fact, I would like to come. I mean, I do not agree because I think their monetary policy is entirely subservient to our fiscal policy. Because all the state bank does is support the government of Pakistan. That is all. And it is there, it is lending to them and it is supporting their initiatives that have actually held back lending to the private sector and to the SME sector primarily. It is good to note that now they are, they have a you know, includes in the financial inclusion strategy, they're working towards that. We as government of centers are also working very closely with the State of State Bank of Pakistan in the agri-business and we have rolled out a number of successful programs and you know, at another point I'd be very happy to share those with you. But so we're very happy with our partnership. But as far as the promotional banks are concerned, they have not really done their job. If they have been risk averse, they have not lent to the SME sector, 
they have not taken the chances, they have not taken any long term calls. What do they do? They they lend to you know the government on short term, I mean these treasury bills are most risk averse business and then they make money. So they have really become rich and they have left out people. That's that's how simply you know you can put it. This has to change, but one of the ways it can also change and should change is our financial sector is not deep. We need to develop our financial sector. Talking about CPAC, this is another issue here. We do not have the depth. Where is this money going to come from? Even if you talk about um, this $46 billion raising this debt, take away the Chinese equity, you do you want to raise this debt locally? Yes, there's an appetite, but where is it? Where? What are the instruments here? We don't have mutual funds. We don't have uh, infrastructure banks. We do not have the the you know um, the structure to actually feed into this development and growth. And here again, there's an opportunity, an opportunity for development in the financial sector. So if we are to really think about all of this and strategize collectively, I think that. We are now sitting on the brink of, of massive growth. I don't know, I mean, I obviously do not agree with a lot of things said uh, <coughs> at the federal level. And uh, this whole idea that we can start growing at 7% miraculously, I don't think that's happening very soon. But yes, we can maintain this growth of around 5% and start growing faster, certainly. But my focus clearly, and I hope everyone understands, is on a more equitable growth. And if that equitable growth is to be had, then it cannot be had without bringing in the SMEs and even the micro-businesses. So as a government, provincially, we are really focused on uh, on delivering a more equitable growth, a more uniform growth, bringing in the rural areas and bringing in the smaller businessmen. Um, in the end, um, I'm, I'm very glad to hear that you know all of this that is being said today and will be uh, discussed during the course of the day will be compiled into a document. Um, I would be very happy and um, uh, so I would encourage comments from you, suggestions as to what we should be doing at this important investment and at the government level with respect to policy making and with respect to encouraging smaller and um, medium sized um, businesses so that this growth that we are all aspiring to is had in a much more um, in a fairer fashion. Pakistan has grown at 4%. We've already had, we also had growth at around 6 to 7%, and other our neighboring countries have been growing at 3 and 3.5%. But that growth was not equitable. Hence, you've left out many generations. So let's not just focus about focus ourselves on this 7 to 8% fast growth, but let's think about a fairer growth as well. Thank you very much, Manisha.